Howdy folks, how you doing? It's been a while since I took a look at Fractured Space. Well, it's not. It's been a while since I showed you anything of Fractured Space. And today seems like as good a day as any to put a Fractured Space video up because there's a whole bunch of new content, new ships. There's a big update being released on Steam today. There's one big promotion going on. So today seemed like as good a time as any to jump back into Fractured Space and show you where the game stands at the moment. Now, for those of you out there who maybe don't know what Fractured Space is, haven't seen any of the other videos I've done on the game, this is a game that I've been following the progress of very, very closely. Developed by the people that brought you Strike Suit Zero. But that doesn't mean it's anything like Strike Suit Zero. It's a completely different kind of game. Um, trying to describe it, it's probably best if you think of it as a sort of version of League of Legends in space. Instead of champions, you've got starships. Instead of lanes, you have sectors of space. And instead of towers, You've got space stations. As far as the feel of the game goes, if you ever watched the uh, reboot of Battlestar Galactica, those massive capital ship battles between the Battlestars and the Cylon base stars, yeah, that's what this is. Those of you who played the Homeworld games, Homeworld 1, Homeworld 2, and the various different expansions for that, when you're controlling your capital ships and sending your fleets out, did you ever wish that you could like, directly take control of one of those ships? Yeah, <laughs> that's what this is. The game's in early access on Steam, so don't expect a polished, finished product, because it definitely isn't, it doesn't claim to be. It's pretty much alpha quality gameplay. There are bugs, there are balancing issues, not everything works the way it should. But as bugs pop up, the team are battering them down, there are changes to the dynamics of the various different ships in the game on a weekly basis, it's constantly being tweaked and messed with in order to try to streamline the gameplay experience. Now, since it is an early access, there is no in-game tutorial. And it can be a bit of a handful for a new player who really has no idea what's going on, where to go, or what to do when they get there. So, for the benefit of anybody who hasn't played Fractured Space, here's a, a very, very quick tutorial on the basics. The game's played on a map in 3D space. If you look down at the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll see the map, and it's colour-coded denoting who controls which space stations in which sectors. Control of those space stations generates resources for your team. Once your team has enough resources, upgrades become available for your ships. In order to claim those resources, you have to return your ship to the orbit of a friendly space station. Once you get close enough, your ship will automatically be upgraded. Now, the purpose of upgrading your ships isn't to make your ships any better against the enemy fleet, it's to make your ships able to withstand the process of capturing the enemy base. What this means is you can't lose the game to a base rush in the first couple of minutes, because the enemy base is just too tough and well defended for your ships to be able to successfully assault it without receiving at least a couple of upgrades. So, control of the space stations gives you something to fight over. The team with more stations under their control generates more resources, is able to upgrade their ships faster, and is in a better position to actually start assaulting the enemy base. So, controlling the stations is important, but some of the stations are a lot more important than the others. Right in the centre of the map, there is a gas mining station. Whoever controls the gas mining station generates a lot of resources for their team. But the gas mining station doesn't become available for capture until at least eight minutes of the game have gone by. And it doesn't stay available for capture for very long. There are very limited windows of opportunity for either team to capture that central gas mining station. What this means in gameplay terms is that if both teams are playing it a bit cautiously, they're both camping their bases there, they're not coming out to fight each other, you're pretty much guaranteed the big fight once eight minutes have gone by and that gas mining station becomes available. It's just too valuable a prize to let the enemy team have without a fight. But while the gas mining station is an important station to control, it pales into insignificance compared to the tactical importance of controlling the space stations marked on the map as A1, A2, B1 and B2, because these stations control access to both teams' home bases. You can't attack the enemy base unless you control one of the two mini-base stations in the sector next to it. And likewise for the enemy team. So the mini-base space stations at A1, A2, B1 and B2 are where most of the fighting takes place. 
So that's it as far as the basic tactics are concerned. As far as the ship to ship combat goes, well, all of the ships behave differently. One thing that they do have in common, however, is that none of the ships have shields. It's all about armour. And armour can be stripped away by gunfire. So I'm constantly shifting the direction and facing of my flagship here, while pelting that other flagship with my flak batteries and taking a battery from his as well. But trying to rotate the ship to ensure that I'm always presenting a clean facing of armour towards his guns. And that is pretty much the basics of Fractured Space. What's actually happening right now is uh, I'm flying a flagship and I'm paired up with another guy on my team who was also in a flagship. We've just nailed an enemy team flagship and we've now got this sector to ourselves so we're capping the two remaining space stations. I'm going for the mining station and he's capping the mini base. Now as soon as he caps that mini base and there we go I've got the mining station and he's got the mini base. We are now clear to jump into the enemy's home sector however my ship took a battering in the fight with that enemy flagship, so I really do need to be on full health before I go in there. So I'm going to activate my boost, which gives me a short burst of speed. Sort of cool down, obviously. And this gets me within range of the mini base. Now, mini bases heal friendly ships around them. As long as I'm within range, and you can see my health bar starts filling up. Unfortunately, the rest of our team has just lost control of the mini base in the opposite sector that controls access to our home base. So the race is now on to see who's going to cap first. And I power up my jump drive. Your ship is vulnerable, very, very vulnerable to fire while your jump drive is powering up. And now I've got to get in there. That's the enemy home base. The sector seems to be clear. This is going to be close. You look at the map, you can see there's a furious fight going on in the Alpha Sector for control of the station that is going to give the enemy team access to our base. And I've already used my boost, so it's going to take me a while to get there. The other flagships jumped in with me. Come on! <laughs> Damn, these things are slow. And we're being capped. They've already started the process. Look at this. We control 75% of all the space stations. And we're losing. <laughs> and, and we haven't even started capping yet. You can see the capture bar filling up there and uh, at our home base down in the bottom of the map. And the defenders just jumped in behind us. And I'm only now breaching the defenses. We're starting to take damage from the enemy base. But it's too little, too late. We have lost yet another game. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, well, it was a nice while it lasted. There goes our base. Any second now. Yep, bingo. Defeat. You know, I haven't actually won a game of Fractured Space in over a month. <laughs> I'm not joking. I, I, I couldn't get a win if somebody died and left it to me in their will. If you're playing Fractured Space and you see me on your team, just abandon the match and start a new one, because we're going to lose. That's just Those are the rules. Actually, while we're on the subject of losing games, there is one other thing that I really do need to talk about in Fractured Space, and it's down to the fact that there is no real matchmaking system in the game at the moment. Well, there is no matchmaking system in the, in the game at all. Now, that's not so much of a problem as it might sound, because no one ship is any better than any other ship. It's not like World of Tanks, for example, where a tier 6 tank is not as good as a tier 8 tank, for example. Um, that doesn't happen in Fractured Space. There's absolutely no problem with any kind of ship being on either team in, in any game. There's always something you can kill. There is an element of rock, paper, scissors going on, for example. Um, ships like the frigates do not do particularly well against flagships because they have to get in close to do damage to the flagships and the flagships have got lots and lots of very very nasty flak batteries which work very very well at close range. The flagships have got more health than brains. By the same token, flagships don't do very well at all against snipers because snipers can hit them from the other end of the map well outside of return fire from a flagship. So there's that whole rock paper scissors thing going on in fractured space but it doesn't necessarily mean that any one ship is any better than any other ship. They're just different. 
So in that respect, the fact that there is no matchmaking system in Fractured Space yet isn't really much of an issue. But what theoretically can happen, it's unlikely, but it can happen, is that you join a game and everybody on your team has selected the kinds of ships that only really do well at short and medium ranges. And everybody on the enemy team has selected ships that do very, very well at long ranges. And if that happens, you are screwed. <laughs> so in that respect, the fact that there's no team balancing going on in the game yet, because it's still in early access, can be a bit of an issue. One other thing that I really should make you aware of, and uh, and this is why I have done nothing but lose games until I figured out what was going on and how to stop it, um, I was joining games in progress. This is not a good idea at the moment. Because what's happening is, if for example you're looking at the server browser trying to find a match to join and you see a game with 7 of 10 players, you think, oh well, game in progress, I'll join that. What's actually going on in that game, more than likely, is that one team is winning and the other team is quitting. And that's why there are only 7 of 10 players in that match. There are 5 players in the enemy team and there are only 2 players left on the team that you are going to join because that's the only place the matchmaker can put you. The enemy team's full. And so what can happen in that situation is something that's been happening to me quite regularly lately until I realised what was going on and how things were already happening was you can jump into a game and as you spawn you're already under attack and your pace is already being capped and there is nothing you can do about it. And it's really frustrating and there's a very, very simple solution. Just don't join games that are in progress. When you're browsing the server browser have a look for the matches that have no players in them, and then you are always guaranteed a fresh start to a game. And people are quitting out of matches when they start losing because at the moment there's no real penalty for doing so. Well there is, but the penalty doesn't mean anything. If you quit out of a game you earn zero experience and zero credits. But unfortunately there's nothing yet for you to spend your credits and experience on. The crew progression system hasn't yet been introduced. Uh, all of the tech upgrades for the ships are just free to choose. Uh, there's nothing to research. All of this stuff is coming, but it's not there yet. So the fact that you don't earn anything when you quit the game doesn't actually act as a deterrent at all. So until the progression systems are implemented and quitting out of battle actually comes with a penalty that means something, the simple solution is to just avoid joining games that are in progress. The kind of matches where you can see 6, 7 or 8 players out of 10 probably means one side's winning and the other side's quitting out. You, you want to avoid trying to join those kind of games in progress. If you can see a server with like two, three or four players sitting on it, then yeah, they're probably sitting around waiting for the game to start. By all means, go ahead and join those. Or play it safe, find an empty server, start your own match. Now, speaking of upcoming changes to the game systems, one of the things that they're implementing is the way that capturing the enemy's home base works. At the moment, all you have to do is get close enough to initiate the capture process and then basically stay close enough to the enemy base and wait for the capture bar to fill up. Which seems like a bit of an anti-climax. It's not necessarily going to be boring because the enemy team probably have something to say about it and <laughs> you're going to have to fight them off while you're doing it. But at the same time that's not really what leaps into most people's minds when you use the phrase base assault, just sitting next to a base and waiting for a cap counter to fill up. Admittedly you're probably going to be under attack while that's happening but at the same time it's it's not really base assault, is it? It's more base to sit next to. Well, that's all changing. You are going to have to actually attack the enemy base, and I think that's great. It just makes the whole thing so much more immersive. Now, I don't actually know how far they're planning on taking it at this stage. Um, I think it'd be fantastic if you had to knock out gun batteries and disable shield generators and all that sort of stuff, but uh, time will tell. At least things are heading in the right direction. And that's not all. Today's big update and the big promotion that they're doing for Fractured Space on Steam also includes uh, new skins, a whole range of bug fixes and balance tweaks, and two new ships. And those new ships are the Corvette and the Enforcer. The Corvette is a support ship. It's a lover, not a fighter. Its main ability is a repair beam. If you always played the Holy Priest in World of Warcraft, then this is going to be the ship for you. There is already a class of ship in Fractured Space that can repair its allies, that would be the Disruptor, but the Disruptor has to get within close range in order to launch its repair drones. 
The Corvette, on the other hand, doesn't have to get nearly as close. But it's a very, very vulnerable ship. It has a whole lot of useful abilities, but it's not very good at taking care of itself. So you can't really go anywhere alone in this ship. So the very first time I played the Corvette, and you can see it here, I thought, OK, I'm in a support ship. I'll find some allies and I'll support them. And the enemy team said, oh, look, there's a Corvette. And they all went after me first. Because <laughs> they're not stupid. So in this respect, it's a, it's a lot like playing a holy priest in PvP in World of Warcraft. I like the Corvette. I think it's a good little ship. I'm just not a great fan of flying it myself. I, I already have enough problems with people ignoring the rest of my team and chasing me from one end of the map to the other just because my ship's got the word jingles above the top of it. Um, give them any kind of excuse. Oh look, there's the healer, and I've, I stand no chance. So. <laughs> so Corvettes are great, but if other people could fly them, uh, and stay close to me, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. It's not all about the healing laser, though. The Corvette does have a number of other very, very useful abilities. Um, its main weapon, which doesn't do a massive amount of damage, you can see it firing here, is called the Smart Gun, and you can see it fires homing projectiles. So that's nice. It just doesn't do a lot of damage. But it's perfectly capable of finishing off weakened enforcers like that. And... Come on, come on. Oh, for God's sake. You see what I mean? It really doesn't do a lot of damage. But, hey, you know, when he's on low health like that, hey, why not? So, yay, you got killed by the healer. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> but anyway, other abilities. Yes, having a look at the bottom of the screen, the Corvette has a bunch of other useful abilities that do make it a very, very useful ship to have on your team. It's got an ability shutdown, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It prevents enemy ships from using any of their special abilities for a short period of time. It has a shield drone, which you fire, and it then generates a globe in space. And any friendly ships inside that globe then have their defences buffed. And last but not least, it has a targeting drone. And the targeting drone is the exact opposite of the shield drone. Uh, it works in exactly the same way. It's relatively short range, so you do have to get quite close to the action in order to use it, but you'll launch the drone, the drone reaches the point of impact and then deploys a targeting field and any enemy ships inside the targeting field are going to be in a world of hurt because they start taking increased damage from everything that shoots at them. So that's the Corvette, one of the two new ships in Fractured Space. It's, uh, it is a good ship, it's, it's definitely an asset. Your, your team will definitely want to have at least one Corvette on its side, but you're going to have to look after that Corvette because unlike the Disruptor, and the Disruptor isn't as good at healing as the Corvette is, but the Disruptor can do something that the Corvette can't. The Disruptor can heal itself. So, if you have a Corvette on your team, look after it. It's a very, very precious resource. And if the enemy team have a Corvette, do this to them. Kill it with fire! Kill it! Don't let the little bugger get away. They're too valuable to be allowed to live. So, that's the Corvette. The next new ship is the Enforcer. The Enforcer's a funny ship. It's definitely not very newbie friendly. And the reason I say that is because it's the only ship in the game that doesn't have a main gun that you can just mash the left mouse button and fire as fast as you can click. Its main gun actually has a ten and a half second cooldown. It has two abilities that allow it to close the distance to its prey. It has a blink drive. It's not the only ship in Fractured Space with a blink drive. And what that does is it allows you to teleport short distance in the direction that you're facing in order to close the distance with your target. But it also has something that the flagship has. It has an engine boost, which allows it to move very, very quickly for a short period of time. Its main gun is interesting. They call it the Escalate Gun, and they call it the Escalate Gun because it fires a whole stream of bolts at the target, and if those bolts hit, each bolt does double the damage of the previous bolt. So you tend to find that anybody with a blink drive or a get me the hell out of here button tends to use it the second they get targeted by an enforcer because this ship can do a lot of damage with one burst of its main cannons. The downside, of course, is that if it misses, or not all of those bolts hit the target because the target's evading, then you have ten and a half seconds to have your wicked way with the Enforcer before he's ready to try again with a second shot. 
It also has a taser beam for disabling enemy ships, and its probably most useful feature is a cap mod drone, and you can see right there those blue domes appearing. Enemy enforcers firing cap mod drones at our base. All enemy ships inside those blue fields capture at double the normal rate, and that is why we lost our base and this match as quickly as we did. So, that's Fractured Space as it currently stands. Um, obviously it's early access, so it isn't finished, but it has a lot of potential. I, I think this is shaping up to be a very, very good game indeed. There's currently, as of today, a big promotion for Fractured Space on Steam, so um, now would be as good a time as any to get your hands on it. Unless, of course, you just don't like getting it into early access games, in which case, you know, watching this video isn't going to change your mind. Or maybe it will, you never know. Um, I, I certainly recommend it. Um, I think this game has huge amounts of potential and I can't wait to see what they do with it. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, take care and I'll catch you next time.